Hey Optimancers, Chris here. So in the past four weeks, I have discussed what I think are the best and the worst class and subclass combinations for various levels of play. Uh, in today's video, what I want to do is I want to talk about the overall picture. So if we were talking about all levels combined, what do I think are the best classes? What do I think are the worst classes? And I want to also talk about what I think are the best subclasses for each class. So what we're going to do is we're going to rank them right from the bottom to the top in today's video. So let's get started. So levels 1 through 20. What do I think is the best class in the game? What do I think is the worst class in the game? What do I think are the best subclasses in the game? Well, it should be no surprise that coming in at last place is the monk. Uh, I put the monk at the worst in every single video, and there's a reason for that. Now, at some point, I need to do a video where I really break down their abilities and show how other classes can do everything better. Uh, and that may be coming soon, but for today, obviously, in my opinion, the monks are the weakest, so it shouldn't be a surprise that they're there. That said, if you're going to play a monk, I suggest looking at the Shadow Monk. Shadow Monk gets some decent spells they can cast. Pass Without Trace is one of the best second level spells in the game. Shadow Monks can cast it, and they can cast it with a resource that they get back with every short rest. So, and the, frankly, they're not concentrating on anything else either. At least they get teleport ability that's pretty cool as well. Uh, so, if I'm looking at Monk subclasses, Way of the Open Hand is up there, but Shadow Monk is probably the best of them. That brings me to what I think is the second weakest class in the game. Uh, this one shouldn't be a huge surprise either, and that's the Artificer. Uh, Artificer got second worst in three of my four videos. So the problem with the Artificer is that the Artificer base class isn't very strong. I'm not saying they don't get anything good. They get some good stuff. But if we're comparing them to other classes, I don't think they get as much. Uh, they certainly don't get a clearly defined role within their group uh, and a clearly defined role of what they can do. And in order to be effective then, they rely on a subclass to kind of save them. Fortunately, with the Artificer, we have two strong subclasses. We have the Artillerist and we have the Battlesmith. They're both very strong subclasses and they both can take what is essentially a lackluster class and bring it into a place where they can be effective. And I've done a build for all three subclasses of Artificer and I gotta say it's so much easier to do a build for the Battlesmith and for the Artillerist because those subclass abilities are so strong. I do think the Battlesmith is the best of those three and the reason why I place it above the Artillerist which I think is also pretty good is that uh, the Artillerist has time limits on their abilities and when those time limits run out then they are an artificer without their abilities that make them powerful. Battlesmith has abilities that just go on and on and on, and that's why I think they are overall more effective than the artillerist. That brings us to what I think is the third worst in the game, and that is the ranger. Now, the ranger hovered around the bottom most of the time. Uh, now, the ranger, I think, gets a bad rap. They look at the class abilities, and they see a bunch of class abilities that don't appeal to them. Things like favored enemy, things like hide in plain sight these are terrible abilities and players read the ranger and those are the abilities they read and they go okay this is terrible the thing i will say about the ranger though is the spells save it to a certain degree rangers get a number of unique spells uh, that work well with what a ranger is supposed to do so instead of class abilities boosting the class they have spells boosting the class and spells the great thing about spells is you can count on them as you go up in levels they're going to become more and more powerful. Certainly that's the case with the Ranger spell list. And by the time we're getting fifth level spells, we're getting some really powerful spells. And these spells aren't things you're going to be doing instead of shooting your bow or instead of attacking with your sword. There are things that are going to complement it. And for those reasons, I think that although the Ranger makes the bottom half of this list, I think you can still make an effective Ranger. And if you, you like the flavor of the Ranger and you make some smart choices, you're going to be just fine. But when it comes to the Ranger, I think... If we're talking about the best subclass, I don't think there's any question. I think it's definitely the Gloomstalker. Uh, there are other subclasses of Ranger that have some very cool abilities, but the Gloomstalker brings you so much right at third level. 
Uh, I just think that it's too hard for the other subclasses to catch up at that point. Uh, and it's not like they don't get anything good after that either. So the Gloomstalker, I think, is the best of the best when it comes to Rangers. Now we're going to get into what I think is the fourth worst class in D&D. Now I should mention that by this point, I don't think these are bad classes anymore. This is getting close to the middle. Uh, and the one I would put here is the Barbarian. The Barbarian, I think, can be a very good class, especially at low levels. Uh, that Rage being able to take double the damage, that that is really cool, right? And it is effective. Uh, Reckless Attack is effective. The problem with Barbarians is they don't scale well. Uh, as we move up in levels, more and more of their abilities are just, you do a little bit more damage on a critical hit. You do a little bit more damage on a critical hit. Who cares, right? Uh, these are small bonuses to damage, considering the damage you are already doing, and considering that other classes might be getting additional attacks uh, or spell casting. A little bit of extra damage on a critical just doesn't cut it. And there's not a lot more there. Uh, and a lot of the subclasses don't offer a lot more either. But I do think the best subclass for Barbarians is the Totem Warrior. Uh, I actually think there's a number of good subclasses for Barbarian. I like the Totem Warrior because it is very customizable. And the one I see taken most is Bear. That's going to give you resistance to almost every kind of damage. But I see lots of people take Wolf, and it's really good too. Uh, so you have some choices as you move up. You have a few spell-like abilities that you can cast as rituals. That's kind of a minor thing. But being able to select from a number of decent abilities at a number of different points, I think, makes the Totem Warrior the best subclass for Barbarian. So the next on our list, and we're really getting close to the middle now, I'd say is the Rogue. Now, there are a lot of people who put the Rogue near the top or even at the top, uh, which I really don't get. Uh, I think a low-level Rogue does very well. Very well. Uh, High-level Rogue, not so much. Uh, the problem is that other classes are getting that extra attack at level 5 when the Rogue does not, and the Rogue also doesn't have spells. And we combine those things... And then the rogue just has a lot less to do in combat. Now, sneak attack is scaling, but it just doesn't scale at the same rate that the damage of those other classes that specialize in weapon use can do at those levels. So you're going to find that that rogue just doesn't quite keep up to the damage. I'm not saying that the rogue damage is bad. You will find that that one hit you do is going to do a lot of damage. So it's not like that the rogue is left in the dust or anything but they're not quite as strong. And I'm told that the big advantage of being a rogue, of course, is the use of skills, but I'm not even convinced that the rogue, certainly at all tiers, is the best skill user either. Uh, I kind of think the bard. Uh, once we get to level two and we get jack of all trades, they're getting basically a bonus on anything they roll. Well, a uh, rogue has one extra skill proficiency, unless you took a lower bard, in which case the rogue even has less skill proficiencies. You get expertise, the bard gets expertise. So I'm not convinced the rogue is the champion of skill use. Now I get that they later on have a guaranteed 10 on their roll, and that is really good. Uh, and it does make them very good at skills. But as we move up in levels two, more and more challenges that might be skill challenges, we might have other solutions to as well. So uh, I think that becomes less and less valuable as you move up in level in addition. And so overall, I think the rogue is fine. I just don't think it's ultra powerful like some people do. Now, the most powerful rogue, this shouldn't be a surprise, I think it's the Arcane Trickster, because there's nothing that any other subclass of rogue gets that I think compares to spells. And spells aren't the only thing the Arcane Trickster gets. The Arcane Trickster gets regular subclass abilities on top of the spells. So you add those to the spells, and I think it's just a clear winner. And that brings us to the next on our list. And that is the fighter. And to me, the biggest downside of the fighter is it's dull. It really has no flavor compared to the other classes in the game. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about effectiveness. And when it comes to effectiveness, fighters are fine. Uh, I don't think they're amazing, but I think they're okay. I certainly don't think they're bad. I think at high levels, they struggle. Uh, because, you know, we get to the point where some of the class abilities of some of the other marshals get really good. Some of those other marshals have spells and the fighters don't, and that kind of hurts. Uh, and I do think that, you know, although they have a good capstone, uh, although Action Surge is really effective, I don't think that's enough. And I think that you'll find that on a single attack, you won't do the damage that 
other marshals are doing. You know, if you had asked me a few months ago what I thought the best subclass for fighter was, I would have said it was obviously the Battlemaster, because the Battlemaster has abilities that work well with melee characters, with ranged characters, or fighters that want to go back and forth between the two. Either way, the subclass abilities would work with you, and they would give abilities that would be useful at low levels and at high levels. But now if you ask me what I think the best subclass for fighter is, I would have to say it's the Echo Knight from Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, because the uh, Echo Knight just gives you so much more. I mean, like with the Battlemaster, the abilities work well with ranged, they work well with melee, they work well with a fighter that wants to do both of those things. Uh, but in addition to that, there's just so much enhanced maneuverability with the Echo Knight. Uh, there's so much enhanced defense with the Echo Knight. And there is a lot of enhanced utility with the Echo Knight as well. So those abilities, and also unlike the Battlemaster, those abilities tend not to be limited. You can do them over and over again. So overall now, I would say the most powerful subclass for fighter is the Echo Knight. Not that the Battlemaster is a bad subclass for fighter. It's still very strong. But I think the Echo Knight has edged it out. And that brings us to our very middle. This is the absolute middle of our uh, list, and that is the Sorcerer. Uh, now, the Sorcerer can be one of the most powerful classes in the game at certain levels. I find that when we get to around 7th level through 10th level, that Sorcerer is rocking. Uh, just because being able to apply meta magic to some of the strongest spells in the game, uh, especially at the point where spellcasting is starting to take over as the most powerful thing that can be done in the game, being able to make that even better is really good. Where the Sorcerer really suffers is at lower levels. I don't think the Sorcerer just has as many tricks as other spellcasters do. Other spellcasters can wear armor and maybe use a weapon, or they have uh, ritual spells, and ritual spells just give you a lot of things you can do that aren't going to use up those spell slots. Because the Sorcerer, at first level, they cast two spells, and now they're just a cantrip user with a terrible armor class and terrible hit points. And that's it. And other casting classes have other things they can do and the Sorcerer doesn't, and that really sucks. Uh, but yeah, I do think there comes a point where the Sorcerer then pulls right up alongside the other spellcasters and kind of carries that out and becomes one of the more powerful classes in the game through the later levels. But because they're so weak at the lower levels, they end up around the middle of the list. Now that said, I think the best Sorcerer at this list in terms of power overall is the Divine Soul Sorcerer. I definitely think that the Shadow Sorcerer is close. And I, I, I'm again, I think I talked about this before. I had to kind of select between those two. And it was one or the other. And it could have been one or the other here too. But I do think Divine Soul brings you a great ability right at level one. Uh, and the ability to select from two different spell lists is very useful. Now, they don't get extra spells known beyond that very first one they get. And that's a problem because we end up selecting from a very good spell list, which is the Sorcerer spell list, and then we have to select from another spell list that's probably not as strong, the Cleric spell list, but it has some standouts. And we just don't have more spells known. And Sorcerers, they just don't have enough spells known. There's so few spells they can cast, uh, and that can be frustrating as well. But I do think, overall, the Divine Soul Sorcerer pulls a little bit ahead of the Shadow Sorcerer. And now we're into the top half. Uh, and the first one I want to talk about is the Warlock. Now the Warlock I don't think is one of the most powerful casters in the game. They have the dis disadvantage where when they get to 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth level spells, they only get to select one spell. They can never ever change it. Even a Sorcerer can change their spell selections at level up, but the Warlock can't for those spell levels, and they can cast them once a day. And other full casters are going to get multiple castings of their 6th and 7th level spells eventually but the Warlock doesn't. So those are some pretty big drawbacks. Uh, pack magic also can be really frustrating, especially at lower levels. When we're talking about a fifth level character and you're beside a spellcaster that's casting over and over and over and over again, and you cast twice and you're done, that's pretty frustrating too. Uh, but invocations are pretty good. The Warlock spell list has some standouts on it. It's not one of the strongest ones, but it's not terrible. Uh, and they have some good subclasses as well and subclass abilities. And Eldritch Blast ensures that you will always have something useful to do on your turn, even if you're out of spells. So overall, I think the Warlock does reasonably well. And the one that, of course, I'm going to select as the most powerful is the Hexblade. Because the Hexblade gives you just so much 
right at level one. Uh, and it is going to ensure that those levels that the other spellcasters suffer, you won't. You will be effective offensively. You will be effective defensively at level one. Uh, and other casters just often don't get that. Clerics do to a certain degree. Uh, but uh, certainly wizards don't. Certainly sorcerers don't. Uh, certainly bards don't. And certainly every other subclass of warlock doesn't. But hexblades do. And that's why I think they become the most powerful subclass for warlocks. And as we get into our higher levels, uh, the next one I'm going to talk about is Druid. Druid often actually makes it at the lower end of these lists, and I'm not sure I understand why. Uh, Druids are full casting class. If you want to be powerful at low levels, the Moon Druid gives you that option. If you want to be powerful at mid levels, the Circle of the Shepherd Druid gives you that option. I think part of the reason why the Druids are often ranked lower is a lot of DMs don't like summoning, so they discourage summoning characters. And the Druid, if they're not going to be summoning, they're really going to suffer at those mid-levels because that's really what the class is based on or certainly the spell list is based around. Uh, but as long as you can use all your class abilities as they were intended and your subclass abilities as they are intended, I think the Druid does quite well at all levels. Now I've heard a lot of people say that the Druids don't do well at low levels if they're not a Moon Druid. I think that the Druid actually potentially does better than certainly than the Sorcerer does uh, and potentially than the Warlock does because they can wear armor, and although they can't wear metal armor, uh, and yes, I understand they technically can wear metal armor, but they won't wear metal armor, uh, and they can use a shield, uh, then you can actually get a decent armor class, 17 usually, for a first level druid, and that's going to be better than your wizard has, it's going to be better than the sorcerer has, it's going to be better than most warlocks have. Uh, and we get some decent cantrips we can do too. Things like Thorn Whip can be useful beyond just damaging things, right? We can use it to move things around the battlefield. Uh, their low level spells aren't great, but overall I think the Druid does fine uh, at low levels. At high levels they do well. Uh, and certainly at mid levels they do well. So I think overall the Druid is one of the more powerful classes in the game. So when it comes to the best subclass for Druid, I would have to say is the Circle of the Shepherd. Now, the Moon Druid is in the running, and certainly if you're playing at very low levels, uh, the Moon Druid is more powerful than Circle of Shepherd. And if we're playing at ridiculously high levels, I would also say the Moon Druid is more powerful than the Shepherd. Uh, but I think the levels where we see the most gameplay, levels 5 uh, through levels, you know, 10 plus, that's where the Circle of the Shepherd does the best, and so that's why I think it is the most powerful subclass when it comes to Druids. And that brings us to our fourth highest ranked class, and that is the Paladin. The Paladin is by far my highest martial class here because the Paladin abilities are so good. Uh, Every Paladin at level 6 is going to get a bonus to all their saving throws and add a bonus to their entire party's saving throws. This is going to make a level 6 party without a Paladin and with a Paladin remarkably different in terms of durability. And this is before they do anything. But never mind the fact that the Paladin, if they're willing to expend the resources, can bring more offense than any other class in the game. And they're defensively strong too and the versatility of spellcasting. And overall, the Paladin is just really, really strong. And as a martial class, it's the best class in the game. As for the best Paladin in the game, I think we have some good choices here. And some of them, I think, can be right for the right kind of campaign. If I am going to be in a campaign where I know I'm going to be facing a lot of undead, Devotion actually might be the strongest. But I'd say overall the strongest is Conquest. Uh, Conquest just gets a lot of good abilities and a lot of good spells. And you put those together, and I just think it is the most powerful paladin. But I think all paladins are powerful, and they deserve their spot at number four on this list. And that brings us to number three. And I think the third best class in the game is the cleric. Uh, and the cleric, part of the reason they're here is because at level one, a cleric does just fine. A cleric can wear good armor, use a good shield, they might be able to use a weapon, if not they have an okay attack cantrip they can use, uh, they have spell casting, they have ritual casting, uh, they have their channel divinity, they just bring so much right at level one, that of any full spell casting class in the game, I think they do as well as any of them, even a hexblade. And this is any cleric, it doesn't even matter which subclass you pick, all level one clerics can do quite well. 
I certainly think melee clerics do better at those low levels, but then again, the non-melee clerics do better later on. Uh, now, I do think that at very high levels, the cleric spell list starts to become lackluster, but it's still a spell list. It still goes to level nine. Level nine spells are still level nine spells, and it's not like they don't have any good spells there. Uh, so I do think yeah, the cleric is just very, very strong, and it's strong at level 1, and it's strong at level 20. And I think the best subclass for clerics overall, and I've mentioned this in another video, is trickery. Uh, and the reason is because the trickery spell list is so good at the levels where you were going to play. Uh, you're going to get things like Pass Without Trace, you're going to get things like Mirror Image, you're going to get things like Polymorph. Normally, cleric domain spell lists aren't that great, but the trickery spell list is. And when you are a full spellcaster, casting spells is what you do. Being better at those spells than other subclasses of the same class makes that subclass stronger. Uh, now, obviously, it's not always the strongest. You get to those high levels. Obviously, their Arcana Cleric is better. But at the levels where we play the most, I think Trickery is the strongest. And that brings us to number two, I think the second most powerful class in the game. And this is another class I often see at the bottom, and I don't get it. It's the Bard. Uh, I have seen so many lists where the bard is ranked amongst the lowest in the game. And this is a full spellcaster capable of ninth level spells. It can access any spell in the game. Uh, they have inspiration, which is a powerful ability. Uh, they have subclass abilities that are also really good. So I don't get it. And you know what? I haven't even mentioned the fact that they are arguably the best class for skills in the game. Again, it, depending on the level we're talking about and the skill we're talking about, the rogue is in the running, but the bard at level two, like I said, can add half their proficiency bonus to any ability check they make, any one at all. So you want to use carpenter's tools, but you don't have proficiency? Well, as a bard, yes, you do. You've dabbled. Uh, you want to use land vehicles? Well, guess what? You're going to have a bonus to that too. It doesn't matter what you're going to roll. You're going to roll initiative. You're going to get a bonus to that. You're going to roll a counter spell roll to uh, counter a higher level spell. You're going to get a bonus to that too. Uh, so all these things that the bard gets, I can't imagine why anyone considers them weak. Maybe players that are just used to playing first level. Bards at low levels have trouble surviving because their armor class isn't good and they don't have spells like shield to protect them. So you take a bard, put leather armor on them, send them into combat, and a lot of time they're going to go down. And that's probably what has caused bards to often end up being at the bottom of the list. But I got to tell you, as long as you progress beyond that fourth level, you're going to find that bards get really powerful. Uh, and even if you get to third level, if you take Valor or something like that, you're going to find you're going to be doing just fine after that as well. Uh, and frankly, the bard doesn't have any terrible subclasses. Uh, the worst I would say is probably Whispers, but Whispers isn't a terrible subclass. It's maybe the weakest of the ones for Bard. Uh, the one that I think is the best for Bard is the new one, and that's Eloquence. Eloquence just gets a lot of good abilities, uh, and I do think it is the strongest of the Bard subclasses, but I gotta say that Bard subclasses overall are pretty good. And that brings us to what I think is overall the best class in the game, and uh, obviously I think it's the Wizard. Uh, the Wizard, I think at level one is underrated, because a level one wizard has a better defense than a lot of other classes in the game. Uh, and they have more things they can do than other classes in the game. They often can't do as much damage as other classes in the game. And that's true. Uh, and that's going to remain true for a few more levels. But that will change too. Uh, and as we go up in levels, spells become more and more important. And the wizards have the best spell list in the game. Now bards can select a couple of those spells. But wizards can select many of those spells. And that's what makes wizards better than bards. Uh, and never mind the fact that they can change their preparations every long rest. So yeah, if we're talking all 20 levels together, I think wizard is the best because, number one, they're so good at high level. And number two, they're not as bad as some people think they are at low levels. And the best subclass in the game? Chronergy Magic. This is the one from Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. Uh, it just has great abilities, really powerful abilities. And the abilities that aren't the super powerful ones are still decent abilities. So Chronergy just does fine all the way through, and then they get a couple standouts. And so overall, I would say that's the best subclass for Wizards, but Wizards have a lot of good subclasses. I've talked about this many times. I'm not going to bring it up now, uh, but Chronergy, I think, is the strongest subclass for Wizard now. But there are a lot of contenders. 
So that's it. That's the total list of what I think are the best, right down to the worst classes and the best subclasses for each. Uh, before I sign off, I want to thank all my Patreon subscribers. If you are interested in joining my Patreon, you will find a link in the video description down below. And then next week, we're going to move on to a new topic. So until then, I want to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everyone. And I will talk to you next week. Thank you.